Hi, my name is John and I'm from Business Focus. In today's video, I will show you how to find the optimal solution using Excel Solver. And let's get started. Finding the optimal solution or the best outcome is critical in helping you make the best decision. Now, in order to do that, you need two things. First is to formulate the mathematical model or linear programming model. Now, this pertains to creating an algebraic equation. The example is x plus y plus z. Then the second part is to create a spreadsheet model so that you can input the mathematical model into the spreadsheet. Then use Excel Solver to find the optimal solution. Sounds easy, right? Actually, it can be once you learn the basics. Formulating the linear programming model has two key components. The first component is to identify the objectives. Either we maximize revenue or sales or minimize cost or expense. Then the second component here is to identify the many constraints, meaning what are the limitations that is stopping you from achieving your goals or objectives. For example, let's say you're a manufacturing firm, you produce chairs and tables, so the typical objective here is to maximize sales, meaning sell as many chairs and tables as possible. Which is reasonable enough, I think so. Now, keep in mind though that there are limitations, uh, meaning resources are finite, whether we're talking of financial or human resources. Then the next part now is to convert what we just discussed into an equation. So how do we do that? So we assign variables. So for example, we'll use C to assign to chairs and T for tables. Next, we also need to find out how much revenue per unit each product makes. So let's say $5 for every chair is sold and $6 for every table that is sold. So the equation would be max 5C plus 6T. Then the next part now is to identify the constraints. Now in actual application, there are many limitations that you need to consider or identify one by one. But for our purposes today, we'll just keep it simple and limit it to just two. So let's assume that the first constraint pertains to the assembly or pro assembly process for the furniture so it takes half an hour to assemble chairs and one third of an hour to assemble for tables then the maximum hours allotted for assembly process for the entire day is eight hours or equivalent to 480 minutes so the equation here for assembly is one half c plus 130 is less than or equal to 480 then the second constraint pertains to the packaging of the furniture so it takes one fourth of an hour to package both chair and table. And the maximum hours for packaging is also the same as eight hours equals to 480 minutes. So the equation would be for the constraint on packaging is one fourth C plus one fourth T is less than equal to 480. And finally, we always add the non-negativity constraint, meaning the number of units produced cannot be negative. Since if you produce nothing, the value should be zero. Now, unless you define this in LP, Excel Solver might give you a negative value, now, which is an impossibility in real life. So the equation for the last constraint should be C and T is less than, I'm sorry, is greater than or equal to zero. So now we have our objective and constraint. So we're now done with the first part. So we'll come back to this and use this later on. So the second part now here is to create the appropriate spreadsheet model. Now, there are two parts here as well. So the first part is creating the parameter. Typically, these are the requirements. While the second component or the second part is the model part where all the calculations and predictions are to be made. Now, the parameter will consist of the process of the manufacturing, namely the assembly and packaging. Then next is the production time, how long each product takes for each process. Then the next is the total available time for the production. And lastly, the revenue per unit for chairs and tables as well. Now you may notice it looks similar with your mathematical model uh, which you did in the first part, which it does. Now next is creating the appropriate model based on our objective. So we need to determine first the quantity to be produced for chairs and tables. So we leave it blank for now. So next is we need to determine total revenue. So how do we do that? We use Excel's function formula equals to sum product. So to, we add and multiply the number of chairs and tables to be produced to their corresponding revenue per unit. So we type in equals to sum product, open parentheses, select the cells on quantity for chairs and tables, comma, 
Then select the cells for revenue per unit for chairs and tables. Close parentheses. Then as you can see here, if you put in quantities in chairs and tables, it will automatically compute for the total revenue. Now, if you produce one unit of each, you should get a total revenue of $11. And if you produce 10 units of each, you should get a total revenue of $110. So we can go on and on and on, meaning you can input any quantities here and you can automatically determine or determine right away what the total revenue is. That's what a spreadsheet model can do for you. So, but for our case here, we also want to take into account or consider the many constraints in the production. So in essence, how do we achieve our objective without violating any of the constraints? So it's just like your parents telling you, son, you can go out tonight, okay, but you have to come back home by 12 midnight. So meaning you can do whatever you want when you leave the house, but make sure to be here. That's your limitation. That's your constraint. And that's life. Okay? Something like that. So you have limits there. And lastly, we need to create a table for the different processes or create a column for the process. Next is the available hours column. So we simply copy and paste the available hours from our parameters. Next is the hours used. So we have to use the formula again for some product. Here we highlight the cells on the quantity. Okay. Then select the cells for the assembly for uh, in the parameter. Okay. Next we do the same for packaging. We select again the quantities or chairs and tables, then select the parameter in your packaging. Now, so what, what do we have here? So we can determine whether it exceeds the allowable production hours or not. So now we can do this by trial and error to find out what is the optimal solution. Or we can ask Excel Solver to find it for us. Now, if you've been following up to this point, then great for you. So we have now done the hard part. The next part now is simply encoding this to self solver to find the optimal solution. So simply go to data tabs, select solver. Now if you don't have solver here, you can check out my other video, how to enable solver. Then once done, a window will appear. So input set objective. So simply select the cell reference to total profit. The next is set to maximum. Next is by changing variable, simply select the quantity for both chairs and tables. The next is entering the constraints. So if you have formulated or the linear programming model in the first part properly, then it should be easy. So click add. So you may notice now a window will appear. There are three parts here, the left hand side, the middle part and the right hand side. So what do we do now? So this should look similar with regards to your constraint in the LP equation or linear program equation. This will serve as your guide or cheat sheet as I call it. So for the first constraint pertaining to the assembly, so it's one half C plus one third T. So we select the cell reference of hours used for assembly, which has the formula multiplying and adding the hours used for each product and the quantity. Okay. Then the middle part says uh, it has the inequality. In our case, it says less than equal, which it already is. So we're okay here. Then the left hand side says 480. So we select the cell under available hours under the assembly, then click add. Next, we do the same for packaging. So we select the cell reference under hours used for packaging in this case. So the next is the middle part. It says less than equal. So we're good here. So no need to change. Then the left hand side says 480 also, so we select the cell for available hours under packaging. Then click OK. Now you may notice you only have two constraints here, but in your LP equation, there should be three. So to address that, we simply check the box for the non-negativity constraint, and then we're done. So next is select the method for solving. So choose the simplex LP or linear programming. Then finally, click the solve button, then we should have the optimal solution. Now, if you hear a beep sound and see an exclamation mark that says LP can find the optimal solution, meaning a mistake was made in one of the steps that we just discussed earlier. So you have to redo the whole process to find where the mistake was and correct it. Now, otherwise, if it says solver found an optimal solution, then you have done it. Congratulations. So to double check if you've done this correctly, simply go to the mathematical model in your first part, then go over each of the constraints. If any of the constraints was violated, 
or not. If it's not, then you're finished. So for the first constraint, you can clearly see it does not exceed 480. So, so far, so good. Then for your second constraint, it does not also exceed 480. So that's good also. And finally, for our third constraint, non-negativity. So they are all uh, positive values and zeros. So then we're done. We have now found the optimal solution. The maximum profit is 8,640 by producing only 1,440 units of tables. One thing to keep in mind though, in terms of decision making, is this the best outcome? Not necessarily, but rather this should be the starting point and not the end point. The next question you should be asking is, can we come up with a better outcome based on our objective? But that's for another day, another video. But before we conclude, I'm sure some of you out there may not have gotten the optimal solution, which is fine, okay? It takes some practice to master this process over and over. You can always go back and review the video so you can find out where you made the mistake. And then hopefully you'll get the optimal solution, okay? Well, that's it. Thanks for watching. Now, if you find this video helpful, hit the like and subscribe button. Also, you can leave your comments down below so you can suggest other topics for future videos. For more guides, tutorials, and tips, you can check out my other videos. I'll see you in the next one.